you and Joni Mitchell had one of the most famous romances. What is so special about Joni? And perhaps you could tell us the story of how Joni came up with writing many people's favorite song that you and Crosby and Stephen have performed over the years, Woodstock. Joni Mitchell is an amazing woman. I personally feel that she's a genius of music. The Hollies were playing in Ottawa in Canada on a gig. And after the show, we go and, you know, the promoter throws a little party and you get a glass of wine and you schmooze and you talk to all these record people and promoter people and stuff. I see this blonde sitting in the corner of the room. And I'm trying to catch her eye, right? I have no idea who she is, right? And my manager keeps coming up to me and he's talking in my ear and I'm thinking he's telling me, well, you know, the producer's name and the promoter's name and his wife's name's Dorothy and get it. And I'm saying, shut up, leave me alone. I'm trying to attract this woman. And he said, well, if you'd only bloody listen to me, I'm telling you her name is Joni Mitchell and she wants to meet you. <laughs> So, Joni and I spend the night together in Ottawa, and, and you know, my wife Susan uh, understands, you know, <laughs> what happened in, the, in my past life, so it's no secret to her. But I spent the night with Joan, and she played me probably 20 of the greatest songs I'd ever heard. Her entire first record, which my friend David Crosby actually produced. Uh, it was an incredibly magic night, and um, you know, we, we spent the next couple of years living together. One morning, Joan and I went to breakfast. I don't know whether any of you know uh, anything about Los Angeles, but in the valley, there's a very famous deli on Ventura Boulevard called Arts Deli. And we went to breakfast there. And going back to her car, we passed this antique store, and she saw a vase in the window that she liked. And uh, I persuaded her to buy it. We go back to the house, and it's one of those dreary, gray, drizzly LA mornings that sometimes happens. We got through the front door and I said, you know what, I'll light a fire. Why don't you put some flowers in that vase? <laughs> <laughs> An hour later, our house was written. Uh, Joan is an uh, amazing woman. She's, uh, she tends to live at the other end of the day than we do. You know, she gets up at four or five in the afternoon and she starts painting and, and, and writing. And of course, you know, she goes to bed at 10 o'clock in the morning when everybody else is getting up and going to, to, to work. Um, the secret about Joan, or one of them, is that, and, and I, I guess it's true for all, you know, for me and David and Stephen and Neil, is that we want to write from our hearts. We want to write about real stuff that happens to us so that we stand a chance of reaching your heart. And I think, if I look back at my life, and when I, when I saw the completed manuscript, I looked down at it and I said, oh my God, I wish I was him. <laughs> <laughs> because everything that's happened is, is kind of, in a strange way, been happening to somebody else. You know, this, I, I mean, I'm not this rock star that, you know, I, I'm not that guy. I know who I am, <laughs> but I'm not that guy. I mean, I think even my wife Susan will tell you, I'm not that rock star. I, I, I'm one of you guys. I just happen to do something rather special. And the truth is that if, I, if I'd have been a bricklayer for 50 years, I'd be a damn fine bricklayer. <laughs> but I've been a musician for all my life. And I've always wanted and been lucky enough uh, to be able to express my feelings and speak my mind. And that's one of the reasons why I became an American citizen over 30 years ago, because I live in a country now that allows me to speak my mind. I'm sure many of you know, Graham is also a great activist, putting his name to really great causes and all types of stuff. So many of us are really grateful for that. Let me ask you, so talking about Joni, how does she decide to give you the song Woodstock? Woodstock. She writes the song. I'll and tell you exactly and how you it happened. And you, David, you, David, and Stephen. What here's, you what, here's what happened. Joni Mitchell was supposed to play Woodstock. She was on the bill. Maybe about a month before, there's 20,000 people going. Bless you. 
Thank you. Um, you know, in two weeks before, there's 100,000 people going. And then a, a week before, there's a quarter of a million people, kids, going to Woodstock, right? Now then, Joni's first major television appearance was on the Dick Cabot Show, which was on the Monday after the final show of Woodstock on the Sunday night. Our friends and our managers, David Geffen and Elliot Roberts, decided that maybe Joni wouldn't be able to get out of Woodstock and she might, you know, miss this incredibly important television show. So Joni did not go to Woodstock. She wrote that incredible song that pins the very essence of what was going on there and she never even went. Mm -hmm. When we got back to the hotel, which happened to be the, uh, the um, um, well, I won't tell you the hotel. Anyway, <laughs> when we got back to the hotel, uh, she'd already finished the song. You know, probably 95%. I mean, me and David and Stephen and Neil, you know, jabbering to her about how exciting it was and what happened may have helped, you know, push the, the finalization of the song. But she played it for us on the piano. And it was... Uh, for want of a better word, it was like dark purple. Like it was very slow and in a minor key, you know? And we were listening to the song, and I look at Stephen, and he's, I, can, I, I know when Stephen is thinking, and I know usually what he's thinking. When she got to the end of the song, Stephen said, can we have that song? <laughs> <laughs> and would you mind if I changed it a little, and put, you know? And it was Stephen who recognized the magnificence of that song. And it was Stephen that built that great rock and roll track to Joni's song, which was completely different than the way that she'd written it. But that's the genius of Stephen Stills.